Lawrence Wilma Sattel. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cohen, for coming in tonight uh, and making this presentation. A couple of questions. Um, are you using the term uh, retail and commercial, those terms interchangeably, or do you see a difference between retail and commercial? I expect the, the tenants in the retail portion of here to be traditional retail and service retail. Okay, I, you know, commercial really captures, captures uh, you know, warehousing. And, you know, it, it's much, it's much grander than, than what I expect here. I expect this to be um, office, you know, office use <coughs> and traditional retail use. And the office use will probably su be support type office, such as a, uh, a chiropractor or a realtor or something like that. But. Um, not um, uh, not going to be an office building. I don't expect it to be an office building. I expect it to be a, you know a real retail building that may have some service office components. If that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the agreement says commercial, and I just wanted to make sure that we're talking both um, <coughs> excuse me both types of uh, activities, not just one or the other. Uh, just a basic question too regarding the actual. Um, uh, size and setup of the development and I'm looking at the agreement um, which states that there would be up to 92 residential apartment units in one or more buildings um, to me that reads like it could be in one building and I hope that's not the case it could it couldn't be in one building okay. because uh, well you we're, we're limited to three stories and one building with 92 units, three stories, would not uh, part. It, it wouldn't work. It, it will be more than one building. Yeah, the agreement says it that way. So it says that it could be. It says one or more up buildings. Up to 92 residential apartment units in one or more buildings. The parties acknowledging the final number may be increased or decreased depending on. I've never, I've never seen a uh, uh, an incantation of this from several. Uh, we've had it from several uh, architects, and nobody showed one building. It's always two or three. Yeah. Well, that's what it says here in the agreement. Uh, that's why I'm asking because it, it it doesn't seem like that's something that we would want. These these agreements, as you can probably imagine, are never perfect. They, you know, it's it's impossible to, to draft something, and that's why this cooperation between the city and the developer is so important. The trust is so important, and and you have to be very very uh, selective. Of, of who your developer is and, and, and what their background is and what their history is and what the track record is. Uh, there will be many uh, issues that can't possibly, that, that will come up that can't possibly be contemplated in, uh, in a development agreement. Um, but it, it's a great question and I would not expect that this would be any less than two buildings. Uh, Mr. Carroll, did you have something regarding that question? Right. Uh, Thank you, Mr. President. The, the question also would relate to the zoning, uh, the SPD uh, guidelines and regulations and concept plan that, that uh, had count, first the concept plan council passed and then the rezoning ordinance that went before PNZ and then ultimately city council contemplated at least three buildings. So the developer will have to uh, build a uh, or submit a site plan that substantially conforms to that concept plan. Um, now, again, just as Mr. Cohen said, we have to be flexible because we have to recognize that uh, what was passed at the Planning and Zoning Commission level for rezoning uh, was not based on a final plan and construction drawings and the rigorous analysis of the site that Mr. Cohen will embark upon. Um, however, my point is that, that zoning still governs how Mr. Cohen and the city will have to build the building, so it will have to be substantially in conformance with the zoning code as well. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Mr. Fitzgerald. Yeah, thank you. Uh, welcome. Good to see you. A uh, couple of uh, observations uh, which uh, you can react to, but uh, uh, one is, uh, uh, and I, I'm sure that uh, through your uh, due diligence effort you've pursued and, and uh, investigated the history of uh, what we call historic downtown Loveland. Uh, and uh, there's been a, uh, an 
almost a, a career long, in, in my case, uh, uh, interest and to some extent involvement in uh, the uh, uh, redevelopment of uh, historic downtown. And uh, while you won't, I think, find a unanimity uh, either among the CIC council or certainly throughout the community of any particular uh, concept, plan, or development for downtown, I think over the years, and probably highlighted a couple of years ago with the uh, advent of what I call the grimy North American uh, plan, which uh, I think many of us felt we were within a couple of percentage points of making happen, and has kind of set the tone for what, what the general uh, feel for a, the development down here will be, and, and I think what you were coming up with is you know, certainly consistent with that. So uh, I think that uh, uh, while uh, anybody at this table you know, may want to pick at a particular component of it, um, I think in general that's not only just because that's what's in our hearts, but it's kind of the marketplace is, is defined for us. Um, and, and certainly there, I mean, there's, there's people in the community who will you know, step forward and say, but you know, those parking lots are there and that, uh, uh, that farmer's market's there. Uh, that's great. Why don't we just leave it that way? Well, um, maybe in a world where economies didn't matter, that would be an option on the table. But you know, you're, you're going to hear that, that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't want you to confuse, and I'm sure you won't, because uh, you've probably forgotten more about these kind of deals than any of us have, uh, have even uh, touched upon. But um, you know, and, and kind of circling back to the question that uh, that uh, Angie brought up, up a moment ago, um, I think what uh, we're going to have to understand, so that uh, council can understand and that the community can understand, is the logic. Um, behind why the elements that are identified in this development agreement are necessary to make something like this, this happen. And uh, uh, those are the kind of questions that are come up, going to come up, um, it, both about function and about amounts. So I don't think anyone wants to confuse that with you know, a lack of trust or, or, or commitment. And I guess the only thing I would caution you know, earlier on, you mentioned that you know, if we can uh, get this development agreement done tonight, um, and I understand time being of the essence, but understand too and that uh, the final cut of this only came to us, as I think the, the memo that covered it, uh, 11 hours before the meeting. So um, you know, I, I think, well, I, for myself, I know I have some some uh, questions to help satisfy me for that logic. So whether uh, I guess my question to you is, do you intend uh, to try and resolve those tonight, or have we got a window of time where we can uh, assemble those those questions, thoughts, uh, observations, and get them to you and, and get some some back and forth on that? Uh, I don't want to hold you up, but by the same token. Uh, I, for one, wouldn't feel comfortable casting a, a vote one way or the other on this tonight, just because uh, I did read the first draft, but you know, I glanced at the at the, at the red line of the uh, of the one that came out 11 hours ago, and you know, it's not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I just don't understand. It. Uh, I will, if you care to answer that question, I'll allow. But my intent this evening was to have a discussion primarily about um, your vision and design for the site as opposed to the business aspects of it. I will remind members of council that we do have a, uh, a uh, <clears throat> on the agenda for this evening an executive um, session planned um, where you know that could be addressed in, in greater detail. I think, uh, I think Mr. Fitzgerald raised some things that are probably worth uh, I I at least addressing, um, maybe clarifying, because there are some things in the development agreement that you may not have seen or heard before. Much of the development agreement uh, was dictated by the Grogan North American plan because they're the ones who got it through zoning, I believe. And so the, the issue of 92 units and 15 to 23,000 square feet 
was, uh, it's in the existing zoning. So that's where those numbers came from. Um, there are some things that are in the development agreement that are critically important to us and I think critically important to, to the city as well for the success of, of Lowland Station. And one of them is making sure that when trains do go by uh, 92 homes, that they're not blowing their horn at three in the morning. So there is a provision for, for a quiet zone and uh, you know, I think it, it, it's pretty clear why that's important to us. I don't think you've seen it in any of the previous incantations of development agreement from other developers, but um, uh, critically important to us that, that that quiet zone be created so that uh, our residents aren't disturbed and you know, again, with an apartment they can move out if, if, they, if they feel like they're being constructively evicted from, from undue noise and so on and so forth. Uh, another feature that you'll see in this development agreement that I don't believe has been in prior, prior agreements is the need to um, address the, the, the utility lines that run along uh, 2nd Street and, and, and Broadway because there will be second story windows that will be exactly at the height of the existing lines with transformers hanging from them and, 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 and all sorts of obstructions that just become impediments to, to getting quality tenant and the high rents. So uh, uh, we made that a, a, a part of the development agreement because um, it's critical to the success of the project. Um, so these are some of the details that you'll see in our development agreement that you probably haven't seen before and a little bit of the, of the, of the philosophy and the, and, the, and, the, and the logic behind them. Uh, and we just got lucky with Duke because they were, uh, this area was scheduled for upgrades uh, and, and uh, um, so much of that, uh, much of what Duke was planning on doing anyway, is they're, they're moving a little bit ahead of schedule so that they can create the, the streetscape that really is, is um, consistent with the, the quality of the project. Um, so I think those are two of the main issues that you'll see in this development agreement that you haven't seen in prior and, and the logic behind it. And I'm happy to address any others that I might have, might have overlooked. Um, from my perspective, if you could get Duke to go ahead and bear the rest of the utilities in the city, or at least the half in Pheasant Hills that aren't already, I would be much obliged. Uh, other questions?